If you guys want to help support the efforts of this course, then go to vpntierlist.com. On this website, you'll find my tier list, and once you decide on a VPN you want to use, go ahead and click on it here. This will give me a small cutback and continue to be able to help me make videos just like this one. Of course, you have all the VPNs rated here. If you click on this, it'll take you to the VPN. This will take you to the review. And I encourage you once again to check out all these reviews and so much content here on the channel. Additionally, I have a My Favorite Product page, which lists out some of my favorite online services. And anyways, let's get back to the video. I want to talk about what some of the features are that I look for in VPNs and what kind of goes into the thought process behind the application score. So I look for application and network kill switches. These are basically the tools that will enable your VPN to um, turn off your BitTorrent client if your VPN turns off or if there's some kind of problem with your VPN and it disconnects, it's going to turn off your network adapter. Essentially, these kind of tools make sure your IP doesn't leak when using VPN. DNS customization is pretty much the ability to customize your DNS uh, with the VPN provider or with other options like Google, Amazon, and other things like that if you want to do that. Not only that, but some VPN providers even provide DNS that will prevent ads, which is really nice. Port customization is really useful if you're trying to use a different port for your VPN. Sometimes schools and works block specific ports and using a different port can bypass these restrictions. Script support is really cool if you know how to write scripts. You could put some scripts into VPNs and do cool things like launch an application when your VPN starts or if you disconnect the VPN, a certain application will disconnect. These are the kind of things you could do with scripts. It's kind of like the end, your sky is really the limit if you know what to do. But there are some cool resources out there on how to write VPN scripts, uh, especially like the TorGuard forums and stuff like that for TorGuard VPN has some cool information I've found. Server favoriting basically means that you could favorite any server and just find it very easily the next time when you're connecting to servers. Dedicated IP support is when you can implement a specific IP that is unique to you and no one else is gonna be using it. It's not like sh uh, shared anonymous IPs. These are good for unblocking captchas. They're good for streaming and stuff like that. <clears throat> Ike V2 is a really cool protocol I look for. Um, it has really fast connection times. The only downside is that sometimes it's blocked a little bit more easier than OpenVPN. WireGuard support, I like to see that implemented in apps um, more so Coming in 2021, um, if an application has it, it's a nice pro, but I'm not going to give it too much points extra. It's just nice to see that compatibility and uh, a VPN kind of going with the trend going to WireGuard. Um, there are, most of my top rated VPNs do have WireGuard support in some form or another. It's nice to see it in the application, but at least the VPN has some kind of WireGuard support, at least for testing is what I like to look for. Encryption customization means that you could customize the the kind of encryption strengths. Sometimes using lower encryption strengths will give you better speeds than higher encryption strengths. Obfuscation techniques basically means that you can use various things like Stunnel, Stealth VPN, or specific ports to unblock VPN blockage or make your VPN harder to detect being used. This is useful at work, schools, sometimes even in strict countries that block VPN. IP leak and web RTC protection make sure your IP is not leaking on your browser. So that's very useful to see within the application. Ad blocking features can come in the form of DNS or a specific um, feature within the application. So I do like to look for some kind of ad blocking. SOX proxy support. I do like to see some support for proxies within the VPN application. Sometimes this can come in the form of just putting it in there, saving it, and it's gonna be kind of like another layer of anonymity on your VPN, giving you like another IP, kind of wrapping it a certain way. It's pretty cool. Split tunneling is when you're using a VPN for one app and not another one, or using it for a game and not in your browser. It can come in handy. Not too many VPNs have it, but I do like that feature and I think more should put it in. Configuration while live use means that you can configure the VPN and change settings or switch servers very easily, not having to disconnect before you do anything. With most VPNs, this is not much of a hassle. Ironically, even though TorGuard has most of the features on this list, for some reason you can't do it with that. So there is room for improvement even for some of the best applications out there. In terms of server performance and latency presentation, sometimes applications like AirVPN specifically, some other ones like IPVanish, I think, show you information about the server load and stuff like that, show you different latency and more information about the servers themselves, which is really nice. Another interesting category to talk about is VPN speeds. Now VPN speeds are an interesting category because in some ways um, there is a variation in where you live, what time you're testing, what you're testing with, 
um, there are a lot of kind of variables that go into VPN tests. And from my experience testing out VPNs for five years or so, I've found that speed tests are one indication of speeds, but downloading content and stuff like that is another indication of speeds. Now, TorGuard VPN and ExpressVPN are probably some of the fastest VPNs out there. Right now, the speed test just isn't really that good. Usually with TorGuard VPN, I get around 250 to 350 um, or download rate. Sometimes you gotta switch servers. Sometimes more people are using one server or the other. There is a lot of variation that you have to kind of um, look into when testing VPNs accurately. Um, throughout my years, I haven't really, throughout my years, I haven't really gotten that much negative feedback saying, hey, you told me this VPN was fast. Turns out it's not. I've lived in a couple different places, which has given me the advantage to be able to test VPNs in different locations. And in most locations that I've lived in, uh, my speeds have actually been pretty consistent across the board testing out VPNs. So there's never been an instance where I tested a VPN and it was like super slow in one area and then super fast. As you can see, now we're getting more around the speeds that I kind of expected with TorGuard VPN. We could do another ExpressVPN kind of speed test here, just a little comparison. And with the torrent test, of course, I do those in my reviews as well. I like to get around 30 to 40 for a fast VPN provider, 40 plus without VPN on for downloading megabytes. So downloading a Ubuntu file is usually what I test to make sure the tests are accurate between VPN to VPN, downloading the same stuff, usually the same time. Um, so that way we get accurate results. So this is a pretty good speed test. Let's go ahead and disconnect from here. And then we're going to connect to ExpressVPN to see what kind of speeds we can get. So maybe hopefully you get higher, maybe get a lower. We'll see what happens. So without VPN on, usually my download is around 1,000 um, Mbps, megabits per second. And usually upload is around 40. My ping uh, without VPN is around 19. Looks like ExpressVPN is having a little bit of trouble here connecting just probably because I was connected to this and it's still kind of trying to figure it out. Let's go ahead and just do that. Maybe that will fix the problem. There we go, it did fix the problem. So we're gonna be connected to this and see um, what kind of speeds we can get now. Um, so yeah, in, in my test, I would say that TorGuard and ExpressVPN are fast. In some of my past tests, ExpressVPN went down a little bit. Um, TorGuard, I would say, has been a little bit more consistent in terms of always getting high speed results. Sometimes ExpressVPN goes down a little bit and then it'll kind of bounce back up to compete with TorGuard VPN. As you can see here today, it's testing maybe 20 megabits per second faster than TorGuard. Um, it's pretty much in the same range though. So these ones are two excellent uh, VPN providers for speed. Of course, giving a little bit more credence to TorGuard just because it's so much cheaper, especially if you don't need that streaming package. $5 a month, $30 a year, and you're pretty much be getting the same exact speeds as you would with ExpressVPN, if not better sometimes. Like I said, sometimes I do get a little bit more consistent speeds with TorGuard, I mean year after year in terms of these tests. So that gives you a little bit of insight in how I do my VPN speed tests. Of course, like I said, sometimes a variation. Sometimes the VPN providers based in EU give you better speeds. Um, sometimes in, in the United States you'll get better speeds. There is a little bit of testing you have to do on your own end. But generally I've found that my tests in my videos recommending these specific VPNs, people have been pretty happy with these results and they get good speeds worldwide because most of the VPNs I recommend are pretty mature and have pretty big server networks.